I think to start this video, I need to address the hair. It's purple now. If you I didn't know that- I think it's blue, Seamus. <laughs> no! I heard you scream about this on stream. And, but to be honest, if you didn't know I dyed my hair, that just is outing you for not following my Twitch streams where we dyed it. I should start by saying, structurally, this video is going to be a little different again, because it's gonna be your regular so, um, yeah video, but there, there's also gonna be quite a bit of vlog footage and an interview that I did exciting. I all know who knows what that's about. But firstly, let's go into our favorite segment, what did we get up to this week? We're bringing back the, the best the best segment the best from segment. this series. What did we get up to this week? Well, th that's what the whole video is about. I, I want to start. I want to go first. I want to go first. I want to go first. No, I want to go first, please. <laughs> um, I went to a, a press junket screening uh, this week for the movie Strange World, the new Disney. We're back, I think. Anyway, I went to a press junket screening. What does that mean? Well, basically, I'm doing the press junket. I, I don't actually know where the word junket came from. Am I already procrastinating? I'm like, procra what does junket mean? How does the press junket screening differ from a regular screening? You might ask, and I did. Well, yes, that is a question I had. But firstly, I had the question, what does junket mean? Because I don't know. Junket. What does it mean? I don't know. I spoke to myself in my vlog, going to the press junket screening, wondering what junket meant for like a minute. I assume it means something to do with, uh, no, I'm not. Guys, does anyone actually know what junket means? Because I was like trying to break down the word. Like, is it jun and kit? Oh, a party or event held for journalists in order to publicize a new film or other product. Oh, so it's literally a made up word. I mean, it does sound like a made up word. Are all words made up? So yes, what does make a press junket screening different from a regular screen? And Vegard kind of just explained it. I think it's just a bunch of like film reviewers and journalists going to the film early. So that's what I'm expecting at least. Why was I at it maybe is the better question. Yes. Because drum roll, <laughs> I was, I was, I had an interview with the, the, the directors of, of, of the film Strange world did last week. Woo! Um, so firstly, I just want to congratulate you both on the movie. Thank you. Um, yeah. Again, we'll get back into that a bit more later because that wasn't on, this was, this was watching the film, the interview was a couple days after that, so we're going one day at a time. Okay, I've successfully infiltrated my way past the first line of security. What I did was ask, is there a screening of Strange World here today? And she said yes. Go down the escalator then. Infiltrated security. But I actually want to say, despite the fact the screening maybe doesn't sound as glamorous as a premiere, watching the movie with a bunch of journalists, I actually, uh, it was in the Odeon Lux, so it was like a luxury cinema, had reclining chairs, had a table with my food on it, had the whole row that I was sat on to myself. What a seat for my coat. Guys, can you hear that? They're literally playing the song that plays at the end of Toy Story 3. <laughs> Also, you didn't have a security guy breathing down your neck the whole film. Yeah, there was very little security. <laughs> when you go to premieres, you have to put your phone in like a little bag, a plastic bag that seals up. And so I guess we went here. I literally got my camera out at the end and recorded myself like walking out in the cinema with the film playing in the back. I'm the only one who stayed all the way to the end and there was nothing in the end credits. Then, you know what I did on Thursday? I went to see Strange World again, <laughs> this time at the UK premiere. Which I was invited to first, by the way. Uh, so I'm like, I'd seen the film on Tuesday. I guess Disney assumed Seamus isn't going to want to see the film again. Little did they know. I'm hearing from a few of my friends, oh, we're going to the premiere on Thursday. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. I haven't been invited. And Vega's like, I just got an invite to the Strange World premiere tomorrow. And I was like, did you now? So then I immediately sent an email to my Disney contact and she was like, oh yeah, of course you can come. Yeah. Well, I actually got invited, I didn't ask. But, did you get invited to do an interview with the directors? <laughs> I'm purely just making fun of this, because I don't- I'm not on social media really anymore. I find it so funny that they're like, Oh, Seamus makes a lot of Disney videos and stuff about Disney movies. You know who would really like to go to the premiere? His editor. <laughs> the voice, the ghost voice in most videos. <laughs> so today, I'm going to the premiere of Strange World. But it's not really the premiere, because I saw it the other day. So premiere means first viewing. It's not true, it's all a lie. I saw it the other day. The ticket has been obtained, and as long as no one steals it from me on the way to the red carpet, which is like just across the road, I will get in. So here we are. Look at that. Wow. We got influencers over here. And then on Friday. No, no, no. Yeah, I haven't finished yet. We, we saw uh, Don Hall. 
on uh, the, the purple carpet, which matched my hair, by the way. And I was like, yo, I'm interviewing him tomorrow. He doesn't know that though. And also the main cast of the movie. I remember that all too well. Really, really fun story. Obviously, as I've mentioned, I had an interview with the directors on Friday. So I walk into the hotel, like show like the email I got inviting me to do an interview on my phone to like the, what are they called, bellboy at the, uh, what, are they, what are they called? The guys the at- concierge. <laughs> The concierge, the lobby. The lobby guy. The Mr. Mosby. Um, I went over to Mr. Mosby and I was like, I got an interview with the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the directors of the film. And he's like, oh yeah, just take the lift to, to floor two. So I walk over to the lift and standing there, I see um, one of my Disney contacts, who I know, st stood with the entire cast of the movie, including Jake Gyllenhaal. And I'm just like, Okay. There was one of those like trolley things that hold the suitcases, you know, like from Sweet Life on oh the Cody. One of those was on the lift. So the lift was so cramped because we were all stood in this lift and I was just stood next to Jake Gyllenhaal and I froze. I didn't say anything. I really wish I hummed all too well, just like really quietly. Oh, could you imagine? <laughs> the person before me is in right now. I'm waiting to go in. There's just like a room of influences in a waiting room. I was also, I was in the lift with Jake Gyllenhaal. <laughs> I'm not, I was very nervous. Um, firstly, I was not running on much sleep. I get very anxious before a big thing like that. And I kept sleeping for an hour, waking up and like, oh, I missed it. And I realized, oh, it's been an hour. <laughs> I would go back to sleep. I like had a list of questions to ask the directors, but it was a five minute interview and there's someone on the side going, um, <sighs> <laughs> there are also kind of questions that you know, well, in hindsight, they're never going to answer. So, for example, I asked them, are you going to make a sequel to this movie? <laughs> they're not going to confirm that in an interview with me, are they? And obviously, it might be too soon to ask this, but um, there's such a wide universe to explore in this world. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any ideas for a sequel, potentially? <laughs> or? I'm not even kidding. We literally just finished this one. Yeah, so I think, uh, you know... Um, I will say though that we love these characters mm -hmm. and we love this world. And I agree with you that that it is a big and vast enough world that can yeah. could could contain more stories. So um, we'll see if this one's well received. You know, um, you know, we'll, we we'll see where we go from there. But it could, you know. And are there any other ideas for other films that you're potentially thinking of bringing <laughs> to life? Well, yeah, this is what. <laughs> no, <laughs> I mean, of course, we always have ideas, but um, you know, we uh, uh, keep those guarded. Pretty close to the chest, as you can imagine. Yes, the answer is yes. Don's like fumbling around to say yes. <laughs> I just hope that like when I was asking kind of questions preying in and like being maybe a bit nosy, they saw it as I was a fan who genuinely loves Disney movies and was just excited and wanted to know stuff rather than like a journalist trying to get a scoop out of them. And I think they did see that. We, we, we had a laugh together. And they liked your hair. They did like my, that, that's actually what I would say. The, the, they made it so easy to do the interview because the first thing they said to me was, uh, Kui, as soon as I walked in, goes, Oh, I like your hair. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so yeah. It actually matched the carpet at the event yesterday. <laughs> you just so, kind of disappeared. Yeah, yeah. I just, yeah. Like a floating phase through the thing. Yeah. yeah. So, um, yeah. <laughs> He said it! He said it! Let's uh, talk about the movie Strange World, though. We've rambled on enough here. Um, what did you... What were your initial thoughts on the movie, Beggard? There were gay people in it. I didn't even think you would say that. I forgot about that. <laughs> it's my review. And as you know, Disney's first... Lead. Teen. Gay. Character. <laughs> but yeah, no, and it was cute because it was like a gay crush that feeling portrayed that not a lot of gay people get to have where you're just like you can't keep your words straight and you can't do anything so seeing that in a Disney movie is like very sweet because then if someone does have that experience maybe they feel like they could actually express it rather than be like oh I have a crush and also I never want to talk about it. it. It very much felt like a very typical crush in a Disney movie sort of Thing. But what did we think of the movie uh, as I because I, I enjoyed the movie and um, I thought it was uh, good fun I thought there was a lot of self-awareness. I thought it was quite funny. There are also a lot of cliches <laughs> um, I said it sounded like a parody of a Disney movie because some of the lines you could say them with the characters and having never watched it. Yeah, it was the, no, that's your dream, dad. <laughs> that, that, that line gets said about three times over the course of the movie. Oh my God, the, the mom and dad being like, oh, you don't like seeing your mom and dad being, loving each other. I was just like, oh my God. There, there were definitely some cringe moments in the movie, I will admit. I think if you can 
look past that and like you know get past the eye rolls mm. i think it's a very cute movie no definitely definitely i loved the message of the movie as well i mean when i asked the directors what was the thing they were most proud of don Hall literally said the environmental message of the movie and um what would be the aspect of the film you're most proud of oh man um well i i'm i'm proud that we were able to juggle a bunch of things you know mm. and you know primarily you know i wanted this to be a, an environmental film mm. You know, that was the beginning. I was thinking about my kids and what kind of world they're going to inherit and what kind of world I inherited from my dad. So I, you know, very much I wanted this to be a, an environmental film. Um, and so I'm proud that we were able to pull that off in addition to doing a big action adventure film, you know, like Raiders of the Lost Ark of yeah. King Kong, which I loved as a kid. And then, you know, the third thing that we juggled is just um, the complexities of father-son dynamics, yeah. you know. And grandfather, father, son, <laughs> exactly. And so the you know we, the the fact that we we're able to weave all that together, hopefully successfully, uh, I'm proud of. Yeah, I always think that when you think about Disney films, like the thing that you think about are the characters, right? Yeah. Like the character they show up in your park, they show up on bed sheets and action <laughs> figures, and so like I, I exactly phones. Like, yeah, phones. <laughs> like so I think that it's, it's also just the characters themselves. I'm super yeah. proud of this family that we created and Splat and Legend, these mm -hmm. adorable sidekicks, and yeah. you know like I think that that it's it's it's, it's it's always a challenge and the wonder and the joy of, of making these movies is making characters that will last forever. I mean it did what a Disney film should do I think. Yeah. So like it did the thing but also I think I'm biased because of the gay thing. I was just like that's very sweet and I was like people should watch it just for, so, for that. So because how memorable do you think the characters are? Did you think that gay Okay, maybe that wasn't. I felt weird the way I said that. <laughs> for me personally I didn't really feel like there was a character that I'm gonna be like still attached to in a year's time, but also is, the, yeah, is Ethan going to be different? I think so, especially the young queer kids out there are going to be attached to him. So that's a success, I guess. I didn't think there was really a character for me, but that isn't the end of the world. Everyone liked Splat more than me. Yes, I loved it. Everyone liked Splat. And Splat's usually I, I despise those type of characters, usually. You know, I'm very like, ugh. I don't like characters that just talk in mumbo jumbo like that. No different to the minions for me. <laughs> it's so cute. I want to merchandise it. <gasps> I'm actually kind of worried I'm becoming a negative Nelly about, about movies. The last time I came out of a movie like, wow, that blew my mind. That was amazing. I, it was literally Spider-Man No Way Home like a year ago. And even now I look at Spider-Man No Way Home and I was like, I think I was probably overhyping it at the time. Was it even that good? Wow, Seamus, what's going on? I don't on? know what's going on with me. We watched um, too many Disney Channel original movies. Did it just plague that, my brain? No, 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 they were too good. I'm not trying to say there hasn't been a movie this year I have liked. I have liked a lot of movies that have come out this year. Even I mean, this one? Yeah, even this one. Pretty much every Disney movie that's come out this year I've liked, including Pixar as well. But either way, I'm worried I'm becoming a negative Nelly. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm sad. Also, is it negative Nelly and not Nancy? Oh, I've always said, oh, I don't know. Oh. I wanted to nervous Nelly. <laughs> <laughs> this is the greatest. Oh, this is really bad. I just messed up the words. We're just gonna dub this over. Every time I said that, we're just Nancy. Strange. Anyway. Strange Nancy. world. Ah. Oh. oh my god! Did you see the fucking awkward ass clip where Jake Gyllenhaal goes like, "And it's a really strange world out there." Nope. Okay. And I'm. I, I don't need to. Please. Need to no. This. Please. It's the cringiest Let's thing. cut to another clip from the interview uh, really quickly. And um, what would you say the most challenging aspect of mm. making this movie was? Whether that be like a bit of animation or a story all beat? It. <laughs> yeah, it, it was basically we cranked like everything that you've seen in all our animated films before. We just cranked those up to the highest <laughs> level yeah. to see if we could redline like, because like how complex can crowds be? How complex can tech anime be? How you know with layout? So it, it was it was basically working at a very high level on almost every department to make this film possible. Yeah. Uh, so, so, so it was all of all the above was made was difficult and challenging. This world we live in today is a pretty strange world too. No, they've they've edited the audio. I'm sorry. They edited the audio to make that more awkward. There's no oh, they way. Said they don't There's say no way. They, definitely the interviewer laughed and replied. I was like, I refuse to believe. So, um, yeah. The next section that th for this video is my theory about the movie. Wow, th uh, this is actually a really well structured free section video. So. Okay, we're talking spoilers now. That, that's been your spoiler-free section. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, that, that I'm going to be talking spoilers from this They film. all die. As anyone who's seen the movie will know, there's a, a, a kind of 
twist at the end. It's revealed that the island that Avalonia is situated on, that they are living on, is actually like a, a sentient giant turtle. It's kind of like the thing from Avatar and the Last Airbender. And the strange world they enter is actually the inside of a turtle. How did the humans end up here? We, we, they don't explain that really in the movie, but, <laughs> but keep your questions to a minimum for now. So at the very end of the movie, as they pan out and show kind of like half the globe, where they reveal it's all water except for this just kind of turtle. But they don't show the whole globe, they only show the side of the globe that the turtle is on. We don't know there are islands on the other side, but this is the, the one leap of faith I'm gonna need you to take for me. I don't know, do we know that? We don't know it. It could be a flat earth. <laughs> and I specifically asked Don and Kui about the sequel, and upon asking that question, Don specifically said to me um, that he does believe there is a large world in this universe to be explored. That it is a big and vast enough world that can, yeah. could, could contain more stories. If he thinks there is more to this world to be explored, I'm going to make the assumption that there are other pl islands on this planet. That, that is the assumption I'm making for this theory. And if there was to be a sequel and they went to the other side of the planet, I think they would discover an island from another movie. Because there is another Disney movie that entirely revolves around a sentient, like, living island creature goddess thing. What movie is that? I've been staring at the edge, edge of the, of the water. water. <laughs> <laughs> Moana, it's, it's Moana. For context with Moana, at the very start of the movie, the world is all water and then Tefiti is born. She's the mother island, the first ever sentient being, and her heart gives her the power to create life. And it actually shows her creating the first bits of life on Earth. And while this is presumed to be a reference to her like giving life to humans, in the movie, it specifically actually shows her creating other islands. And one of the islands at the back literally looks like a turtle. That does look it like a turtle. It literally looks like a turtle. That actually I looks think you like- could, I think you could pass a lot of these for turtles. And so do I, to be yeah. honest. Specifically, that one looks exactly like the island because they're like all living there and then that's the mountain that they need to cross. Now, I can admit there is one slight problem being that we don't actually know if these islands are sentient. The only sentient island we actually meet in Moana is Tefiti herself. Obviously, the island that Moana grows up on is not sentient. I do think there's further evidence in favor of there being more sentient islands and being higher powers in Moana because like Maui is literally a demigod. Maui's story is that he was abandoned by his like human parents and then he was taken in and raised by the gods which made him a demigod. And I think the gods in this world are the islands because Tefiti is seen as a goddess. Does that mean he was raised by a bunch of sentient islands somewhere on earth? Unclear, but actually Maybe, I think? But with that all said, I do believe there is more than one sentient island on the planet that Moana exists I in. I mean, why? She'd get lonely, you know? She did sleep for about a few hundred years. And we've got the island that looks exactly like the island that Avalonia is on, on this, in the, in, literally in Moana. And specifically, Don Hall, who was the director of this movie, also directed Moana. So yeah, I tried to quickly explain this fear in about 10 seconds. I definitely slipped up. I had to look up the name Avalonia halfway through this thing because I forgot oh, it. No. I like really crumbled under pressure for a second. And this is what he said. I actually believe this movie takes place in the same world as Moana. And Tefiti is actually like, this is a child, this island that um, uh, Avalonia oh. exists on, is like one of the children of Tefiti, oh. the mother island, of course. And I know you uh, were a co-director on Moana as mm -hmm. well, so. And he confirmed it! Yes. Oh yeah, nice. exactly. I will confirm it. <laughs> kind of. He, he did. That, that was a fake clip. And I know you uh, were a co-director on Moana as mm -hmm. well, so. <laughs> I, I will neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> but okay. I think that's an interesting theory. He, he didn't deny it either. He didn't say, well, that's wrong. Because I actually, I was kind of nervous asking like the directors about theories because like, I don't know if it kind of like sees them, I could annoy them in a way, like. Someone has taken enough interest to actually make their own ideas in your yeah. world. And they're like, this is my world. Don't, uh, no, no room for other ideas. But no, they, they were fully for it. I said like, I've got a theory and they like both sat up in their chairs. <laughs> but then Kui actually said that there are uh, uh, character cameos uh, in the movie Strange World. Are there other like Easter eggs or even character cameos in this movie <laughs> to look out for? Yes. Oh yeah. There, there's quite oh, a yeah. there quite are. a few uh, uh, 
uh, Easter eggs on this one, uh, and like full characters that show yeah, up, and they're like movies. in deep backgrounds and yeah. on shelves inside the venture, uh, and of course the the, the Mickey logos. Yeah. Uh, but there, there's quite a few, and the joy is for you guys to find it. Not I'll so be much my magnifying glass looking for more one characters to <laughs> prove that they exist in the same universe. You think it's a good theory? You think I'm right? I think it's fun. Do you think he would have said no if it was wrong? No. Oh. So. Oh, no, never mind. Sorry. Yes, yes he would have. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he'd have been like, wow, that's an awful theory. Get out of this Actually. interview right now. So basically, the conclusion is Strange World actually appears in Moana first because the, the island is in Moana. And it, that, that's the title of the video, and we finally got to it. If you enjoyed this series, uh, make sure to go check out the other episodes of So I'm Yeah. Go make sure to check out my Twitch streams. And special thank you to Kayla, Anna, Chase, Jacob, Natalie, Natasha, Aneshka, Caitlin, Jordan, Ollie, Jonathan, Ben, and Will for supporting me on Patreon. If you also want to check out my Patreon and all these amazing rewards, make sure to check it out. Link in the description down below. Woo, okay. Uh, if you enjoyed this theory and this video and this vlog and this style and the review and everything, make sure to leave a like. You can subscribe, watch another video, check out the Patreon I just mentioned in the description down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.